Hello there! Yes, it's me! Actually, for once, you actually see my hands move because I'm actually using Leap Motion Controller. Anyway, I'm actually here to do something a little bit different. And that will be, of course, something that I like to call LOL what. This will be a commentary thing that I'll be more like doing on a weekly basis due to the fact that um, there's a lot of stuff that happens during the week and I'd rather just compile it for, obviously for the following week and then of course give my thoughts. Obviously there will be chapters down below, well chapters timestamps, so feel free to join in on that. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Make sure you do like and subscribe to the channel as again I'm actually going to post a bit more on a weekly basis rather than the whole daily thing. So please do stay tuned for that. Anyway, let's get on with the video. The first thing I would probably want to talk about is the whole sniper wolf situation of her ghosting a child, or a mother technically, of a 10 year old child that's currently dying of cancer. While this does look bad for sniper wolf, again I wanted to give it a benefit of doubt, but unfortunately the DMs have fully been linked and all the context is now out at sea. I don't know whether or not the mother and of course Sniper Wolf are actually trying to resolve this issue, but in honestly it does look bad for you, uh, Sniper Wolf. And that's all I can say on the matter, because there's really nothing else to say. But of course there is actually something else that actually happened, there's actually quite a few bombshells that happened near the end of the year between Christmas and the New Year, so obviously this is technically last year's news rather than this year's news because obviously nothing much has come out. But in addition, obviously, this year will be the three year anniversary of the Vic Mignana situation. This has been going on for three years as a lawsuit for defamation, torture, and interference, British prospects, contracts and of course precarious liability. But Jamie Markey and Monica QL have decided to basically now decide to open up a podcast to basically open up about their stories. Knowing the fact that the lawsuit is still in appeals after after nearly two years is probably not going to look good for them because Monica QL has changed her story various times and of course they are taking the text version of the deposition that was done on Vignana completely out of context. Along of course with the fiance Ron Toyo. And I would not trust Ron Toyo in my life considering that obviously he did do very nasty shit to women. Especially with a remote. Moving on. And of course we did receive also much more sadder news literally just on the end of course the year. Betty White, one of the most greatest actors ever to be in comedy to date, was about to turn 100 this year. Unfortunately, she did pass away. But people are counting that, of course, the, that she's been on the planet for 99 years, and of course, there was 24 leap years that she's been around for, that she would qualify to be 100. And apparently people are now scolding the Queen because obviously she did not receive her 100 years card. Well, Telegram actually is. But it's actually not done by the Queen herself. It's actually done by a representative of the Queen. I agree, but also don't agree. In many retrospects of that kind of matter. Obviously, now we're going to go on towards the two controversial things that happened, obviously, at the, near the end of this year. This, of course, being one of Mama Max. Mama Max basically tweeted out and, of course, did a massive video called Pick a Side YouTube. This basically leads into a controversial thing of basically either your team children or team pedo. Which, again, if you're saying you're either team, it sounds bad either way because people could easily misconstrue that. And yes, it does cause a discussion, but it sets a bad precedent. Especially with what happened with Matt, what it is when he was targeting the 
advertisers. Of course, obviously Mama Max didn't want to actually try and do that, which she did again, or fail on him. Many people had an issue with this video, and I respectfully agree with it. I agree with them that, yes, obviously I do believe that certain things should not be taken down. But, in fairness, the thing that Max got taken down for was for nudity, and it was for a virtual character. And I find it to be absolutely barbaric that the fact that a fictional character's posterior gets that channel taken down. Like, I can easily give another example. My friend of Bridge Goku had a video of a comic dub taken down because of Android 21's cleavage. And there was nothing revealing about that. So it really does show a lot in retrospect. But also the fact that in in addition to this, yeah, we all, we all don't like pedophiles. I wish Mini Lad and Red Kiwis would get off the platform because they have confessed and yet they've gotten away with it. I'm surprised Mama Max hasn't done a video on both of those guys considering that all their information is pretty much public and the fact that also mini lad ran away to Ireland like a little bitch yet yeah, I still remember that mini lad and you deserve to be fully sent to the law and then died and the fact that the system for YouTube is so apparently broken is the best that we got unfortunately and this is someone who's been on this platform for 15 years now. Yeah, I've been on this platform for like 15 years and I've barely even budged. But hey, I'm growing myself naturally. But in addition, yeah, YouTube system is broken. Many people that are malicious are actually even ab abusing the, the system both algorithmically and of course systematically and that is something that I do agree on and that I believe that needs to have an open dialogue. That's all I can say on that matter. So if people are going to accuse me of being a pedophile, I would suggest you don't consume that this is probably the most neutral stance that you'll ever ever have. While I agree with the message but I disagree with how it's been currently been handled. How it basically went off like that. And of course, inciting harassment towards like Colt's husband and fun enough, Chris Hansen. And now we're moving on to the final section. The most unknown bombshell that I've ever seen in my entire life. Creep show art actually returned to YouTube and made a two hour fucking hit piece on Emily Arthur who made two videos in May and June. I was watching this on Augur RFC for the past four hours and I was like what? None of none of the stuff debunked any of Emily's claims and the fact that apparently the document was made on the 6th of August it took her two months to actually form a response and apparently according to Emily Arthur that their lawyers are in communication but Emily chose to stay silent about this so apparently this is supposed to be the smoking gun yeah this is gonna do more harm than good for you shannon and that's saying something unfortunately that apparently that you have posts and videos that are no longer on the internet like the only way that you could get them is basically if someone else archives them for you or you've been stalking her since she was 12 and now she's 29. Are you that stupid? And the fact that you went off on Tipster 
at the last part of your, your video. Didn't even debunk any of Kevin Carter's claims and the fact that you're also bashing against your, your sister who pretty much also went out on you. Like, you said to your friends to not defend you. And you... And Tipster was the only person wanting to reach out to get even more context, to at least have evidence. But you decided to go off on him. The fuck? Anyway, that's it for the lol what's. If you guys actually do like the video, like it. If you just like it, unfortunately, you guys won't be able to see that shit. But anyway, that video got ratio to shit. And of course, rest in peace to Betty White. Hope you guys to see you around. And of course, this is Mecca. Chin up for now. Let us.